are attracted to heroes, they reach for their forbidden books underneath the, in, in their hidden spot underneath the bench there. Um, and then he says it. We have to learn to accept the place where we are. We have a tendency to think, I could be a hero if only I was somewhere else. He makes the observation, here we are. We don't need a special place. He says it this way, London was good enough for Milton. Jersey's was good enough for Washington. It's a wonderful reference. Um, he says it this way, that country is the fairest, which is inhabited by the noblest minds. It is fundamental to understanding American thought and American history that the early thinkers understood that what school and education should be about is to educate young people's minds, of course their bodies as well, but their minds to be great and to be pure and to be reflective. That is, I think, one of the most important things that we learn from Emerson. He's constantly calling us, and as teachers and as students, he's constantly calling us to say, can we be better? As a nation, the only way we're going to be better as a nation is to be better as a people. And that is to say, individuals have to take responsibility to develop their minds. And certainly, we're studying these Emerson lectures for this very reason, right? Uh, paragraph number 13, he says, we admire our great heroes. He says it this way. Um, and then he begins to talk about these heroes as being not just male, but also female. For people that say that Emerson had a thing against women, they got to they got to contest a uh, um, a series of, of lines like this. Um, he's talking about the maiden, the woman who can be a heroine. Let the maiden with erect soul walk serenely on her way. Accept the hint of each new experience. Try in turn all the gifts God offers her that she may learn the power and the charm that, like a new dawn radiating of the deep of space, her newborn being is. The fair girl who repels interference by a decided and proud choice of influences, so careless of pleasing, so willful and lofty, inspires every beholder with somewhat of her own nobleness. The silent heart encourages her. O oh, friend, never strike sail to a fear. Come into port greatly or sail with God the seas. Not in vain you, leave, you live, for every passing eye is cheered and refined by the wisdom. In other words, Women, like men, can be heroes. This is important. Now, of course, today we roll our eyes and go, no, duh. But hey, 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 look at your dates, right? I mean, 1841, we're still living in a time that's very much driven by the patriarchy. And you have lots of people who do not feel comfortable with saying women can be heroes just like males can be heroes. Of course, today we're going to argue absolutely. Paragraph number 14, he talks about the importance of persistency. Right? In other words, it's not enough to be heroic for a day or an afternoon or even for a short period of time. You've got to be persistent. He says it this way. Be true to your own act and congratulate yourself if you've done something strange and extravagant and broken the monotony of a decorous age. It was a high counsel that I once heard given to a young person, quote, listen to this one as advice to you as young people. Always do what you are afraid to do, end quote. Whoa! Now there's a suggestion that will challenge us, and maybe some of us will write that one down. Always do what you're afraid to do. Now, of course, we have to say within reason. And yet, think about the thing that you're most uncomfortable. I mean, I taught this concept to a student once, and he admitted that he was afraid to go out for a sport. He'd never done it. And so he went out, he walked up to the coach, and he said, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm here because I'm afraid to be here, and I want to overcome my fears. Whoa, I have students that go out for uh, drama, who go out for forensics, who go out for music. And one of the reasons is because they're afraid to perform or speak in public. So they take on that challenge. Fascinating idea. I hope that maybe that one will resonate with you as well. Paragraph 15, he will say it this way. Let us be generous of our dignity as well as of our money. In other words, greatness once and forever has done with opinion. In other words, he says, I'm not interested in what other people have to say about what I do. If I feel it's the right thing to do, I'm going to do it. He also points out in this paragraph, it's not a very good idea to always be talking about the charitable things that you do. Let other people talk about the charitable things that you do. Don't celebrate yourself. There's no point in it. If it's done well, you have everything you need. You don't need any more celebration, right? That's his point. Paragraph number 16, he talks about Heroism is always associated to some degree with 
self-discipline, asceticism, learn to be without. Thoreau's essentials come to mind. Paragraph 17, times of heroism, he says, are generally times of terror, challenges, in other words. But the day never shines in which this element may not work. He continues, whoso is heroic will always find crisis to try his edge. Human virtue demands her champions and martyrs, and the trial of persecution always proceeds. And then he uses a wonderful word picture. It is but the other day that the brave Lovejoy gave his breast to the bullets of a mob for the rights of free speech and opinion and died when it was better not to live. Now, this is uh, talking here about Elijah Parrish Lovejoy. On November the 7th of 1837, he was murdered by a pro-slavery mob in Alton, Illinois, who were attacking a, pr a printing house because of his, ab uh, his um, ab um, abolitionist's uh, press. And he, st and he stood by it, and he took the bullet, and he died. We're reminded, of course, of what the great Martin Luther King Jr. said, that if you don't have something to die for, you've got nothing to live for. It is, of course, a challenging idea, but it's in this Emersonian tradition, and he's celebrating a hero like Lovejoy to say, it, obviously, slavery was wrong. Why is it that more people didn't stand up? Because there weren't a lot of heroes. And Lovejoy stood up and said, it's wrong, and we got to contest it, and for that, he paid with his life. That is compelling, and we should respect it, Emerson says. Paragraph number 18, we'll finish the essay. I see not any road of perfect peace which a man can walk, but to take counsel of his own bosom. Let him quit too much association. Let him go home much and establish himself in those courses he approves. The unremitting retention of simple and high sentiments and obscure duties is hardening the character that a temper which will work with honor, if need be in the tumult or on the scaffold. We think of the end of Dickens' Tale of Two Cities, don't we? In other words, his point is this. You know challenges are coming. You might even get jacked for standing up for what's right. Do it anyway. Finally, he finishes in paragraph 19 talking about the importance of a model. We need good models. We need to be good models, but we need good models. He finishes it this way. Who does not sometimes envy the good and brave who are no more to suffer from the tumults of the natural world and await with curious complacency the speedy term of his own conversation with finite nature? In other words, individuals who have died for a cause. We envy those individuals. I mean, think about in your own education, the ways in which a study of history, a study of the great lives, can kind of motivate us. Well, that's the essay. Let's work now quickly at level two and three. At 2A Messages Themes, well, several of these are obvious, right? We need heroes. We need to emulate heroes, which begs, obviously, a 3B question, and we'll get to it in a little bit. Who are your heroes? Who are the people that... Notice, we're not talking about celebrities. Celebrities are different. Now, celebrities can be heroes, but just because you're a celebrity does not make you a hero. Of course, Emerson would challenge, challenge celebrities to wake up and to embrace the fact that being a celebrity is nothing if you're not heroic. You can be heroic with your celebrity status, though, and in so doing, you can be a contribution to your culture and to the world. Of course, as well, it is hard to live the hero's life. you got to have those two things of honesty and courage, and that is something that often we, we kind of want to shirk from. Finally, of course, the conformists are going to hate and fear the nonconformist hero and are going to make fun and are going to ridicule, and you got to be ready for that and accept that. At 2B, the rhetorical stuff, I love the fact that Emerson is ready to give us a quote from Muhammad to begin his essay. I love the fact that he has these powerful word pictures like the Lovejoy word picture. This is what often makes great writing and we should consider. Think of the power of a simple line as well. Emerson is one of the most quoted writers of all time, certainly in the American literary tradition. Right? The, the, again, one more time, the essence of greatness is the perception that virtue is enough. What a great line. At 3A, how are we going to relate this to other texts and to ourselves? Well, let's start with where we began, great biographies. We, here we have Plutarch. We're going to be doing um, St. Augustine's Confessions later. Um, that's an autobiography. And as well, we've already talked about Franklin's autobiography. Again, we made that argument in the lecture of Harvard Classics. Go back and look at it again. We made the argument that every school child should have read Franklin's autobiography. Why? Because it shows us what hard work actually can accomplish. We need that. Of course, we could ask this question as well. What are some of the greatest 
biographic pictures, movies that you are familiar with, and why? Why do you resonate with those? Where, whatever they are, why do you resonate so much with those? And it kind of moves you, it makes you, it compels you, it calls you to want to be something better. And that, we need that, we need that. Finally, of course, we can think about Longfellow's Psalm of Life. Think about those two different sections that work so well with this. In this world's broad field of battle, in the bivouac of life, be not like dumb, driven cattle. Be a hero in the strife. Stand up and fight for what you know is right. And then, of course, that second set of lines. Lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime. And departing, leave behind us footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another sailing our life saw our main. A forlorn and shipwrecked brother seen shall take heart again. That idea, borrowed again from the Robinson Crusoe text, that idea that when people are down and they need help, can they look at your life as a guide? Can they see your life as worthy of emulation? In other words, we are high school students. Are you prepared right now to go down to that middle school and stand in front of a bunch of eighth graders and say, hey, 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 when you come to the high school, live your life the way I've lived it. Make the same kind of choices I've made. Do it the way I've done it. Some of you are shaking your head. No, think about this. They're already watching. They're already watching. And your job, your responsibility is to live a life so that the younger can look at you. Think about it. That's exactly what you do. How many adults in your life who are double your age, we'll call it 40, do you look at and say, oh my gosh, I hope I don't end up like that person when I'm old. Think of it. What will an 18-year-old say about you in 20 years? Well, he or she look at your life and say, dude, when I'm 40, that's what I want to be like. Or will they look at you and say, well, that's a pathetic thing called a life. I hope I don't end up like that. Your living now will predict that living then. That's what Emerson is arguing. It's worth at least consideration. Let's jump to 3B quickly now to finish. Can you think of a time in your life when you feel like you were heroic? When you did something heroic? I think it's important that we remind ourselves of that. You could maybe write for a few minutes on a time you were heroic. Of course, the flip side of that coin is we all have them in our lives, right? A time that maybe you weren't so heroic. You let who? Yourself down, right? You kind of let yourself down. You, I mean, you got to accept that. You don't overlook that and say it doesn't matter. It does matter. But of course, you have to accept the fact that there are times when we don't act heroic and we've got to kind of live with ourselves and the choices that we made, obviously hoping to do better. And again, the challenge for us is the preparation to say, I want to live a life worthy of emulation. If I haven't lived a life worthy of emulation, I start now. We think of that great notion, right, from uh, the great German philosopher Nietzsche that we've talked about before, that idea of eternal reoccurrence. Are you prepared to say about the life you're living that you would live it again and again and again? Same choices, same observations, same actions. And if you say about your life, I am not prepared to go back and do this all over again, then begin now. Emerson and Nietzsche both would argue, begin now. And by the way, Nietzsche has tremendous respect for Emerson and this idea. You can live your life as a great work of art. You can live your life making conscious choices, right? To be, try to be better. Remember what Thoreau says. He says we must learn to reawaken and keep ourselves awake, not by mechanical aids, but by an infinite expectation of the dawn that does not forsake us on a sound of sleep. I know of no more encouraging fact than this, that a man can actually make his life better through a conscious endeavor. Whoa, a conscious endeavor. That will sound very much like who? Of course, Socrates in Plato's Apology, the unexamined life is not worth living. In a line, we could say it this way, Emerson argues that the heroic life is the examined life. Ask why you do what you do, and if you don't like the answer, change it. You have the power to do that. Well, there you go. That's the great essay uh, on heroism from Emerson. It's not a long essay, but it's a compelling one. Our next study in the Harvard Classics is Emerson's classic, Oversoul. I hope you come back for that one. One of the really important essays in the history of Emerson thought. Thank you.